I'm Caitlin Bristow. Your session is now starting. Welcome to the Thank you for coming to my house. Yes, my it's been pleasure. How many years? A lot. Like yeah. five? Yeah. Like it was for me, it was literally a lifetime ago. I don't know her. I don't know her. Don't know her. I don't know. It's crazy how much life happens in five years. Mm -hmm. Like you yeah. think and it's it's like encouraging and scary at the same time to think five years from now because I'm like oh my yeah. god I'll be 43 same probably on my eighth di not divorce but break mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not I won't even get to the marriage roundabout yeah yeah I'll be on my eighth roundabout who knows I know it's Th scary. but that's the thing or it could be the opposite I like I just yeah, could have a baby eat. yeah yeah it's just so much life happens in five years, but I could read your bio, obviously, that the reason I have you here is, will you tell everybody what you do? Because you do a lot of things. You do a lot of things. <laughs> How would you describe your career, your brand right now? Yeah, so I have been a holistic chef for a decade, and in the last two years, I switched over to being a holistic breakup coach as well. So I really coach women going through divorces and breakups, but really more specifically, women who identify with kind of an anxious attachment style can't get out out of the room you know the rumination the looping yeah. thoughts all of that yeah how did you transition to that career how did you go from being a holistic chef because weren't you in law school at one point too <laughs> you're good yeah <laughs> you are good i wasn't in law school i was on the trajectory i was a paralegal paralegal decided okay. that was not for me went to culinary school and I, I moved back to Nashville in 2013 and started my business. And to be honest, some of it is I'm just kind of saturated on the food front. Like how many times can you talk about paleo banana bread? You know, um, I felt that way about scrunchies. I was like, how many scrunchies can I really sell? Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's a trend. We're over it. Freaking Brussels sprouts are still having their moment. Like paleo, whatever. Okay, so you tell me about the transition. That's yeah. where I was going with that. It's okay. I'm thinking about the snakes and Brussels sprouts thing. Have what? you seen that? Yeah. Snakes and Brussels sprouts? Apparently people have found snakes and Brussels sprouts. So I know. Well, what do you mean? Oh, no, it's broccoli. Oh, I just ate broccoli. <laughs> I literally just ate a bowl of broccoli so, before you came I'm here. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I just, it's fine. Snakes. They're not. Yeah. No, there's not. I mean, if you think about it, vegetables grow out of the ground mm -hmm. we find bugs and stuff in them My, yeah. there's but you mean people bugs open up a snakes. bag of broccoli and there's a snake a in snake. there yeah never eating broccoli again thank you yeah okay don't vouch for me on that though I'm, I, it's yeah i'm definitely doing my research after yeah I'm i, I should too. Lying. <laughs> anyway so that's my reasoning for getting away from the food stuff but no i mean truthfully i think it was it was partly that i was just i was i love it but i i felt like i had reached i was yeah. i had reached that saturation point but I was also not only had I gone through a divorce in 2018, but I was on my second relationship post divorce. And this one just really it was a doozy like the heartbreak was bad. It was really gnarly. Really? Yeah. And I moved out of his house in a snowstorm in February 2021. Woke up the next day was living in an Airbnb with my Canadian friend, Megan. Oh. Megan. What yeah. Up, Megan's so great. She's an amazing therapist, actually. Oh, um, God. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Handy friend to have totally in a breakup. Totally. Wow. The best. And I just truly starting that day, I was like, I've got to do something different. Because yeah. when I was writing my second cookbook and going through my divorce, I was doing everything wrong, like drinking way too much, eating like absolute garbage yeah. and all of this while writing a health food cookbook. Yeah. So had a lot of like cognitive dissonance right. I was just not being honest right and I also was so physically ill from the grief of the heartbreak mm -hmm. that none of the food that I normally I mean it was a very humbling experience because I, I didn't even want to make my own food I didn't have the time or energy for my own right. recipes yeah like even when I'm going through stress I know what that feels like that rock bottom heartbreak that awful awful feeling where you can't get out of bed and you just don't have the energy to even cook and I got down just like 97 pounds at one point. I've, I've been there. But even when I'm stressed just over, even if I have a clear head on it's the right thing or I'm stressed about something, like eating really gets affected by moods. And it's interesting because I'm sure eating the right thing can actually benefit your mood and energy levels and hormonal balances and all of these things. So is that what you have found over your research and switching into this career path? is how much food does affect a mood? Hmm. Yes. So yes, and I mean, food definitely affects mood. 
But what I was so interested in, because even when I was trying to eat healthy-ish things that were simple, I was not digesting them well. Mm. And so I specifically started to study the science of, of grief and how that relates to your mood and what you need for grief specifically, because again, like oh. a, a kale salad with quinoa is like probably not going to go over well when you're in certain stages of grief. Some of them it works fine. But initially, our when we're in fight or flight like that, our blood flow is getting diverted to basically to your muscles, your brain as if you're going to be attacked by, mm -hmm. you know, wild animal. So you just don't have a lot of energy for normal digestion. Not to mention there's a lot of other things that can change. Like there's science that shows that you have more increased salt cravings because that can help sort of manage stress and all of this stuff that's very specific to not just grief, but actually sort of what we perceive as romantic rejection. So mm -hmm. you can experience rejection even if you ended a relationship explain yeah so I, I nodded I, my head and went yeah and then I was like well, tell me more <laughs> go on tell me more. so yeah so the work that I pull this from is is from a, a woman named Dr. Helen Fisher and she talks about how withdrawing from a traditional rejection you know someone deciding they don't choose you can very much mimic substance abuse withdrawal but when you add that to the lens that most women see the world through which is that we are responsible for the emotional climate of a relationship. Mm. That's kind of what we're indoctrinated into. Even if you end the relationship, often I see with my clients, there's a lot of self-blame and shame. Like I should have been able to make it work. Yeah. I just ended it because I feel like I tried everything, but it's still got to be my fault somehow. Right. During a heartbreak and going through these different seasons, how do you know what to pair with emotional healing? Like what phases you're going through? What foods are easier for your body to digest going through? these times. Yeah, so I would say I try to break it up into two sort of big chunks. So it, I, you might have heard of the stages of grief by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, kind of yes. like the denial, shock, anger. But with Dr. Fisher, because she has this kind of like romantic heartbreak bent to it, I really like how she separates it into protest and resignation. I wouldn't say I like love the word resignation because it's actually more like acceptance. Right. But when you're in that first initial stage, you're almost in a fantasy land where it feels safer to focus more on reconciliation than to actually acknowledge what's happening. And so that's where we're really in fight or flight. Our dopamine's really high. We're not digesting a lot. We're kind of tired and wired. Adrenaline and cortisol can be really high. This is a time, again, where I would not be putting in a lot of really like fibrous foods, spicy yeah. foods, acidic foods. I would focus more on nutrient dense liquids, soups, smoothies, again, relatively bland. If you're going to have vegetables, cook vegetables, coconut water, because not only are we all crying a lot, but a lot of us are not thinking to hydrate, like minimal caffeine, that kind of thing. And then as time goes on, our appetite starts to come back. But then what happens is it kind of like comes back with a vengeance. And so yeah. that's where we start to crave like, like double time. Yeah, yeah. And that's where your dopamine actually goes down. And so you kind of yeah. start wanting that hit of dopamine again. And food's a great way to do that. Food is a great way to do that. That's like a scary thing, though, because it's just crazy how much food is tied to emotions, like emotional eating. And if you're, you know, the comfort food and wanting certain things like going through a heartbreak, wanting soup makes sense. Mm -hmm. You're sick. You don't feel well. Soup like it's interesting how there's probably science into that as well. Yeah, it's amazing. I know I actually do a whole class. It's about an hour long on how to kind of like deduce what your cravings are, because sometimes you need the thing, yeah. like not like a healthier substitute. You really right. do need the food to give you that to give you that comfort. So you're kind of choosing like, where do you want the comfort to come from? I, I know what you're saying, but I don't know the order or exactly all of them. But mm -hmm. what is the first phase of grief? Yeah, I mean, so typically for most people, it is going to be like some form of protest. It is going to okay. be like shock and denial, essentially. Yeah. Like this can't be happening. And that's also just your brain protecting you. I mean, yeah. it's just too much, at, at, you know, to, to sort of digest, for lack of a better word. As things sort of start to, we sort of acknowledge the reality, we yeah. move more towards anger. Yeah. And so when my clients, they, I, I always see about halfway through our program, they typically start to tell me they're really feeling angry as if they're doing something wrong. But it's actually a sign that what we've done is move them through yes. their suffering. So suffering is the stories we tell ourselves. Grief is what we are sort of biologically meant to process. It's not fun, right? but we can handle it. But the suffering comes from the stories we make up, the meaning that we make. And so I, my job largely is to get my clients out of suffering so that we can make way for grief. And that's when they feel that anger. And then you move more towards 
a non-clinical depression. So I, all my clients have to work with a therapist as well, but it's a non-clinical depression and then acceptance. Okay. I pride myself in skincare. Really do. Our skin has a huge effect on our confidence and there being so many products out there, it's kind of hard to find acne and anti-aging products that really work. Why not take the guesswork out of it and simplify your skincare routine with Curology? Curology makes personalized prescription skincare products. So a licensed dermatology provider will prescribe you a personalized formula that addresses your specific skin concerns and skincare goals. Curology custom formulas use a combination of three clinically researched ingredients, making it more effective than non-prescription cleansers and moisturizers alone. And the best part, there's no need to hassle with an in-office appointment. So Curology is all online and the products are shipped directly to your door. And right now you can get up to six skincare products free. That's up to $52 value with free shipping and a no-cost consultation with a licensed dermatology provider when you go to curology.com slash vine. Go to curology.com slash vine for this free offer. That's curology.com slash vine. Prescription products are excluded from free product offer applies only to your first box subject to consultation new subscribers only see curology.com for full details i think a lot of people have been taught to not feel anger and to like bury that down in these phases of grief going through a heartbreak people always that's like the number one question i get asked in my dms is like i'm going through a heartbreak how do i deal with this i can't like mm -hmm. fathom what's happening i'm broken all these things do you suggest actually really taking the time and having the patience to go through each emotion and each phase of grief to fully heal like I think a lot of people think well I don't want to be angry and they'll like skip a step but is that burying something deep down hmm. yes I mean yeah I would say it is yeah. it is sort of repressing something that again does I mean grief is not linear but it right. does have an overarching beginning middle and end right. and we really can't bypass it it will come out sideways somewhere but the biggest thing I find is that breakups can or divorces can kind of fall into two categories. One is a client who comes to me, I do a compatibility call and they say, this happened and I'm just really sad, but like, I'm sure it was the right thing. I'm sure it's the right decision. I'm just really sad and hurting. Yeah. I can't really help them. I mean, I can offer them food resources and maybe some kind of self care, but that really does have to move through on its own. My job is for the other kind of breakup or divorce. And this can be someone who comes to me and this could be three or four years later. Mm. And it's when they can't get out of the, the thoughts, the obsessive looping spiral thoughts. If I had just done this one thing, would yeah. it all have been different? Is it my fault? I'll never meet someone again. That's, that's really where I come and in. And how do you answer that? So I use a couple of tools. I would say one of the primary tools that I use is attachment theory. I'm really interested in that. And, and also some of the work of Dr. Fisher, just so just t sometimes normalizing what's happening yeah. can be really, really helpful. Totally. But the thing is, we can't, we can't even get to the point of letting all of those stages of grief come up. Like we want to feel the anger, we want to tell someone to feel all those things. But if you don't feel it, like at your core with your fundamental paradigm, the, the belief system that you have, mm -hmm. if you don't think it's safe to actually be in, be in the world on your own and mm -hmm. fully grasping that you are now once again sort of a an independent entity, you won't be able to get to the grief process. So we have wow. to literally repattern their brains around those beliefs and come up with a new paradigm. I just I always think about things like your Enneagram number, your love language, uh, what personality type you are. When with attachment styles, you're saying people can evolve through them and switch attachment styles through work. Yes. Okay. I absolutely think unlike Enneagram or I don't know, like numerology or whatever, attachment is absolutely environmental largely and, uh, and can, and very much malleable. So it's, it's, it can develop pre-verbal. I mean, yeah. before the age of two, although there are a lot of researchers and I agree that really traumatic early relationships can impact your attachment style. Yeah. But the work that I do is to show them that I believe anyone can become secure and, and I watch it happen with my clients. How cool is that? Oh, it's the best. It's so rewarding. I yeah. can't even imagine because I'm sure from therapy and everything I've done, I've watched myself completely change with attachment styles. But how does one like what's the perfect resource or way to find your attachment style? There is a YouTube channel called the Personal Development School and it's run by a woman named 
Thais Gibson, mm -hmm. and she has a quiz on the Personal Development School website. And I love it. It's the only really nuanced attachment quiz that I've found. Oh. It will give you percentages of each because everyone's, you know, if you're in this world, if you know the language, everyone's like, I am anxious, I am avoidant, or I am scared. But we're all a mixture of all of them. Right. And so she'll let you know kind of where you are on that spectrum and and you can see your different yeah your different percentages that's what i'm like i, th I think i'm like all the above with love languages except for physical touch i'm not good at that i gotta get better <laughs> but like i'm like yeah give me all the gifts give me all the time give me all the like i just like can't can't everybody be more than one thing which as you're saying i'm sure you can mm -hmm. and this kind of breaks it down for you a little more mm -hmm. yeah we definitely pretty heavily lean or a lot of people heavily lean into one or another it's kind of like where what our tendency is what we get pushed into yeah. really largely again based off of early childhood experiences yeah. but i have seen people go from one relationship to another where they just like ping pong because yeah. of the person they're dating it's crazy because i really think of how different i am in each relationship i've been in over the last well let's say i've like let's include my ex before I went on the show. Like, so let's say three relationships in 13 years. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, if I keep going at the age of 50, I'm gonna be the most solid person <laughs> in a relationship. Like, do I just wait? And I'm not saying this to make you feel silly because it's more for me and we're kind of the same where you go through these breakups and divorces and you you go, how do you get over the fear of starting over? Mm -hmm. I think that was a big one for me and I think it is for a lot of people where you're like, well, it's not terrible. Like, he's not a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. So it must be something with me. And then mm -hmm. like, but I don't want to start over and I'm 38 years old. But really, it's like the brave thing to do to choose yourself to know that you could be happier and or even that you could treat the other that the other person deserves to be treated, you know, the way that you would want to be mm -hmm. treated. I, I, I would hope that somebody would think like Caitlin deserves to be loved this way. He deserves to be loved this way. And how do you get over the fear of just like, I'm too old and it's too late to start over? I mean, a couple things. One, I would offer, I mean, I, I talk about this a lot in my work that we have these like faulty or sort of broken equations that are taught to us. Yeah. And what you said was, so like, he's not a piece of shit, therefore, it must be me. And I would say that's an example of sort of this faulty equation. Like, it, totally. it's, it's not actually how that works. Right. But it's so understandable. And again, I really do think a lot of this is what we're indoctrinated into as women, but also cultural influences, uh, you know, yeah. the fairy tales, the one that got away, the soulmate, the twin flame, all yeah. of that stuff is so damaging. So yeah, I mean, for sure, I think that's one thing is that a lot of people feel that way is yeah. that somehow it must have been then and them and then they label themselves as a problem. But I would also just invite um, a new definition of starting over too, because I mean, I do not know a long term marriage in which both people don't fundamentally start over as separate as their own person become mm -hmm. a completely different person. But the relationship often totally starts over, mm -hmm. you know, and so I mean, I think when we think about what that what that really looks like, and we also know that a lot of people death grip relationships, just to have the longevity when they're really hurting both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true and you find all the reasons in the world to you know try and make it work but from your experience how do you balance the pressure of i guess the pressure to maintain a healthy lifestyle while dealing with the difficulty of a heartache because i feel like when someone feels heartache i've tried even with a friend who's going through something hard i'll i'll go you can just sit just let it all out like lay in bed all day and do this but you got to at some point balance of maintaining that like a healthy lifestyle and getting out of bed and doing things to make yourself feel better while going through the process, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, that's literally why I started to study it because as a, like I was a health food person and, and all I wanted to do was nothing. And right. uh, so I really, I that's why I kind of researched a protocol. So I have something that I call, honestly, it's such a cheesy title, but I call it the master chart on grief and healing. Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> I think it's great. But it's, uh, so what I did is I took multiple scientific theories and I combined that with my knowledge of nutrition. And so I give this to my wow. clients where they can literally pinpoint the stage of grief that they're in. And I have self care and food and wellness tips that yeah. are actually going to be a good fit for them in that stage. It's actually conducive, like I wouldn't recommend someone immediately post breakup, go for a run or something right. like that. Also, when speaking of the, the uh, anger stage, 
like going to a rage room or yes. one of those like smash rooms yes. is a great thing to do yes. you know oh my gosh the way your body can move through anger without you even knowing how angry you are like <laughs> and how how much that can help you know what i mean yeah like just... even when i'm feeling angry there's it's so funny i started working out based on hormones too where when I'm in my PMS phase, I fully box for the week, like, mm. or I'll do two boxing classes in the week. And it's just crazy how much, like, we, we just have these thoughts of, I shouldn't feel this way, and I shouldn't do this. But anger is a feeling, a normal feeling. Mm -hmm. So it's about how I just had this conversation with these two moms who they do a lot of research around like parenting and children's behavior. And Anger is something that you need to move through to get past. It's just about how are you dealing with the anger? Like maybe don't go, go punch someone in the face, but punching a boxing bag, like, you know, you got to move through it. And I just feel like we have so much shame around feeling angry. Yeah. And it's really part of a, a grieving and healing process. Yeah. Yeah. Throw it in the science category. Like, it, I mean, it's there. Right. It's part of it. But yeah, it's I mean, science. women are sort of taught we're not supposed to. I kind of we kind of touched on this too, but there was something you did on Instagram recently that talked about the scariness of starting over. We mm -hmm. kind of were just talking about that, but I, I feel like a lot of people who listen are in this phase of life. I feel like a lot of people in life right now transitioning, whether that be jobs, careers, relationships, and everyone is scared to like even me right now. I'm so scared to let go of this house mm. and move into a new one because. I've gone through so much in this house. I feel like there's a weird energy in it, but mm. it's like my home and my first purchase. And I just know this big, scary change and something that I want to invest in is going to be so good for me, but I'm scared to do it. And I'm I'm just like, what am I single and 38 going to move into this big, beautiful house by myself for me? But you know what I mean? Like we have this fear around starting over with either something or someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like you just did an Instagram post about this recently. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I talk about it a lot in different facets. I mean, there's so many, there's so many different things that come to mind. One is, I do think we have this idea about kind of like motivation or better feeling that we kind of like have to wait for to feel the motivation or feel the better feeling. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's on the other side of like just doing the uncomfortable thing. And yes. and that's another thing is that I would say sort of collect collectively, colloquially, we're we're taught that we're supposed to try to like move out of negative emotion rather mm -hmm. than just coexist alongside it yeah and then I think also asking like what's the alternative to yeah. not do it you know that's where I've gotten with this is, can be a whole other conversation but with aging I've always been so fearful of aging and just the simple thought of like but what's the alternative <laughs> yeah you know like what would you rather right it's like how do you move through the fear I guess that's such a cool thing is moving through the fear because like you said it's on the other side so you got to move through it to get to the other side but it's just it's so uncomfortable for people to feel fear. So uncomfortable. And it's so crippling. It's almost mm -hmm. easier to just stay comfortable mm -hmm. when really you're making yourself uncomfortable either way. So choose your heart, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. That's so true. Coming up on the holidays, I feel like this is a big one with people at home that are listening or watching going through a heartbreak, going through a hard time and going into the holidays. We all have that one aunt or uncle that's going to say something about you or grandma about you being single and where's this, where's my grandbabies? And, you know, there's mm -hmm. people experience this weird dy dynamic with families in the holidays. But I think a lot of challenges come up for people emotionally and also with around food as well mm -hmm. for the holidays. I guess what advice do you have for navigating this time of year? Let's start with heartbreak. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think some of these answers, maybe they'll be a little bit similar. I think with heartbreak is just remembering that at the end of the day, especially as an adult, like you've got to protect yourself and set your boundaries and yeah. put yourself first. Because first of all, no one cares as much as they make it sound like they care. Yeah. You know, it's their own projection, their own yeah. drama, their own stuff. As adults, we so we have to separate wanting someone's approval from needing it and mm -hmm. having it actually have anything to do with the choices that we're making. Mm -hmm. Remembering that like going into these situations is going to be it's going to start, it's going to stop. It's, you know, and so we, we think we make a lot more drama about the meaning of it than actually just, yeah, s setting our mental boundaries going into going into it. And honestly, there are some people who when they're talking, we have to what is it like the, the Muppet who like this had like the squeak or what a beaker or beaker, something? my favorite one, right? Yeah. Yes. So like almost when they're talking to you, literally pretend like it's beaker talking. Oh, that's like, funny. Yeah. I like yeah. that. I'm going to definitely do that. I just feel like it's so hard. Like I was talking to somebody who's been single for the past, I forget what she said. I think it was five years. 
And she mm. has started to hold so much resentment around the holidays because she always feels alone and sad and like she's pathetic because everyone's showing up with their significant others and Mm. it's a family time and you know families with who have kids or even you know relationships and she always feels so triggered by the holidays going in especially if she's going through like she was kind of seeing a guy Mm -hmm. they broke up and now she's going into the holidays again alone like is there just is, is there something you can do for that? I mean, I think the biggest thing, and this might sound cynical, and there are some amazing relationships out there, but keep in mind, and I'm sure you know this, that the loneliness you experience in a relationship can be far worse than the so loneliness true. of being single. Like, yeah. And we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Yeah. So I think we have this idea that somehow holiday with person equals better than holiday alone. And a lot Silly. of the time, that's just not the case. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you don't have to do the, if you want to do holidays with your family, you can, but you also don't have to you can take a mental health vacation to mexico if you need to go go to hawaii instead yeah all right vinos wella professionals new line ultimate repair is the most premium line to date it was developed with over 140 years of experience and research to deliver the very best with key ingredients aha and omega 9 it rebuilds hair bonds inside the strands and replenishes the outside barrier of damaged hair repairing hair damage in only 90 seconds it's incredible this luxury product has rich textures and floral scents and it's designed for all hair types and textures it's the perfect luxury leave-in spray treatment that everyone can benefit from from. If you saw my Instagram story, you've seen the results. <laughs> it looked like I went and got a professional blowout. It's incredible. So after I wash my hair, I just spray the Ultimate Repair Miracle Hair Rescue all over my wet hair. Then just wait 90 seconds and then blow dry in style. That's it. You don't have to rinse. You don't have to even apply heat. It repairs hair damage in 90 seconds no matter what. I can't get over it. It's really a miracle. The proof is in the pudding, people. I've seen it with my own two eyes. My own two eyeballs. You can try the Ultimate Repair Miracle Hair Rescue with 10% off the travel size on Amazon by using promo code 10 Vine. And then let's talk about people's relationship with food going into the holidays as well. And I always, I struggle with this because I think over the last, God, I don't even know how many years I've been working on my relationship with food and I've gotten to a really good place but the holidays why do I feel so much shame around the foods that I'm eating when it makes me feel good and it's comfort and it's with family and it's you know the potatoes and everything I feel some sort of shame around eating that way and I know a lot of people probably struggle in in other ways but is there any advice that you have for people that struggle with their relationship with food going into the holidays? Yeah, I mean, I think that comes from a lot of other sort of stories like shame, feeling out of control, Mm -hmm. you know, but I think keeping in mind that we think of the when we say holidays we act like every single day of the next three months so true. but it's it's like really a handful of days you know and so I, to me it's like enjoy those days have the things that you want but but don't don't let it don't let it be this sort of like big looming monster yeah that's a good point i think that too i'm like well december's coming up so i'm gonna be <laughs> like i think i'm eating like potatoes turkey and cheesecake and pumpkin pie every day for the next 20 whatever days like you're right it's it's what are you doing to feel good on the other days and I'm all about intentional eating and it's about what you're doing on the days where like what makes you feel good what makes you feel energized what so in your cookbooks can you explain them to you to Mm -hmm. me do you talk about like is it kind of like a story with the cooking Mm. this one definitely is for sure this one has a whole section on that breakup and I mean nothing like crazy detailed but you know some of the lifestyle tips and changes that I made and things I went through so I would say the first half is this own little I don't know ebook kind of thing and then the recipes themselves are really meant to be for just like next level easy I look back at my first two books I love them I'm so proud of them they are not super realistic for a lot of people price wise and logistic and time wise and I I do feel like this one is more for anyone like for anyone yeah well because it must be hard as a chef and a trained chef to not want to give them like these intricate recipes where you're like it's I know what I'm talking about but and how do you simplify like you just is it just going back to the basics of cooking yeah I mean my first two books also I honestly like I had a life wasn't as expensive but I had a bigger 
budget and yeah. I was making like $30 cashew cheese and was not thinking about right. the, I mean, the ingredients are incredibly expensive and I'm grateful that, that are, there are a lot of people who benefit from the recipes, right. but I also think I needed to hedge that and have them be a bit more accessible. Right. And, and I also think I was in a bit of like, um, ingredient overload. And then with my second book, I was single. And so my, the recipes took a really long time because yeah. I had nothing else to yeah, do. Yeah. So looking back, I'm like, why does my chicken parm take like three hours? Like I would never make that now, but people do. I mean, they love, they love them. I just, I needed something for, yeah, someone who, someone who just like really does not have the time, money or energy to like, yeah, do something fancy. I think that's so fair. Like uh, when I do cookbooks, I, well, I love cooking I, and I like sometimes when it's like a little more complicated because I feel so proud at the end. But if you're talking about mixing heartbreak with food and people's energy is and, and like dopamine levels and everything that goes into the time and energy to even get the stuff you're like make it simple please yeah. just make it simple and make me feel good got to what do you think that the three biggest like if somebody was going to take three takeaways from this podcast about what to do or how to feel going through the worst heartache of your life like what are three big takeaways like i'm sure eating what watching what you're putting in your body and mm. all those things but what are what are three takeaways Honestly, I think my biggest takeaway is to really start to listen to the words and the things that your brain is telling you about how you feel about this breakup. Mm -hmm. I mean, the words that we use are so powerful. Even yeah. a word like rejection, like throw that out the window. Like what yeah. do we, and ask yourself, what do I even mean by that? And whose voice is it that's telling yeah. me that? Whose definition? Do I even agree with that? Right. We hurt the most pain comes not from the grief. It comes from the things that we are like saying and we're not even picking them apart and questioning them. And I'm sure they're lies. I'm sure lies. so many things. I, I'm sure the most pain we ever feel in our lives are from lies we tell ourselves. A thousand percent. Isn't that crazy? I have no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. And then when you do that and you really start to ask yourself whose opinion that is, is it your ex's opinion? Is mm -hmm. it a movie's opinion? Is yep. it a parent's opinion? Yep. When you clear a lot of that out, and I mean, it is nuanced work. It is the work that, that I do. But when you get rid of that, yeah, I mean, you, you still absolutely, I would say, pay attention to your body because a lot of the time, especially if you are someone who has kind of a, a diet that you follow or you consider yourself a healthy eater, I use diet sort of like as in the food that you eat, mm -hmm. you will naturally want to carry that and your normal workout routine into your breakup mm -hmm. and especially as a means of control but but start to really pay attention because a lot of that your body will not be responding to it the same way mm -hmm. and it's kind of course correct based off of what your body is telling you yeah and I mean I also would say you just reaching out to to so many people for support yeah. like the people in your life will emotionally save your life um, yeah. if you are willing to and they want to be there for you so they want true. to you always feel like you're i'm speaking in general for people but people feel like they're a burden yeah. when they're going through something like that and they don't want to feel pitied or taken care of but like if anyone close to me was ever going through something like that i would want to help in any way that i could especially knowing that i've been there and i know what that feels like you know yeah. people the people that love you want to take care of you 100 percent I was going to say, it's, isn't it crazy that a woman's body can literally grow a child, grow lungs, a heart, veins, fingernails? Okay. Yes. Like, <laughs> I just think of like every little, like it knows to grow like hairs yeah. in your nose. Like yeah. every little thing that your body can do that, yet we don't sit there and go, what does my body need right now? And, and believe that our body has the answers. 100%. Again, I mean, it's the same. It's like this cocktail of the people pleaser and the anxious. And and for some people, I say this, I, I'm not diagnosing anyone from a non-clinical perspective, but the concept of the fawn trauma response, I don't know if you're What's familiar that? with that. So there's a guy named Pete Walker who wrote a book called Complex PTSD. And we are, a, a lot of people are, have heard of like, you know, fight, flight, or freeze. Mm -hmm. But he added in the fawn response, which is actually a trauma response in which we seek to merge our identity with that of another person mm. and take on their qualities to stay safe. And that is a thing that a lot of mm. women do. A lot of people do. Men mm -hmm. do it too. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing is like, it's just a, for a lot of people, it's just like not safe to differentiate yourself or to be super checked into yourself right. because then you can't be selfishly, not sorry, non-selfishly sort of bending over backwards for everyone in your life. Gosh, 
isn't it so crazy that we're probably gonna like learn all these hard lessons and then turn 100 and be like can i do it over <laughs> kaylin we're not close to that <laughs> i told you my fear of aging i just think i'm like i learn so much every year about life and love and relationships and myself that i'm like i honestly this is my therapist is always like yet you you fear getting older yet every year is your favorite year because you get to know yourself better imagine how great you're gonna be at 60 where i go yeah but my butt will be saggy i'm so shallow <laughs> no we're material girls in a material world yes. we're not shallow we have to, it's like everything around us that's so true god i just saw this whole thing about ai how there's like women on the internet now who you can talk to and their ai but oh god I, yeah and, i know and of course they are exactly what we've all tried to move away from in the media they are big boobs tiny little waist blonde and you're like me <laughs> no i'm like damn I, it i see them i don't why are they popping up on my feed i see them popping up on my it's, instagram feed maybe me too and i don't know why because i'm upsetting. like i want nothing to do with you <laughs> leave me alone robots <laughs> I don't want it. Get out of here. I'm already freaking trying to work through all my insecurities. Don't make me worse. Oh. I did have a question actually because so Primal Kitchen sponsored my friend's giving that I just had and it was so incredible because I, I really am a foodie. Like I love different foods and I love pairing them with wines and everything like that. But I'm there's something wrong with me where I think I ruin everything with spice, but they sent me this spicy buffalo sauce. I could drink it. Like I could put it in a cup and drink it. It is so good. Does that say anything about me? Does that like mean I'm spicy like spicy buffalo sauce? Yeah, like I don't know. Are you what you eat? Am I just a spicy human? Is spice good for you? What, I just like, like what? it hurts so good. You like the pain? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is that sick? <laughs> but like different phases of grief or different things that you're going through. Mm -hmm. Is spicy anything part of it? Like, is it good for digestion? Is it good for metabolism? Do you have any thoughts on spice? Because yeah. I am like a freak for it. I mean, so I would say from sort of like a woo-woo meta perspective, I mean, there could be a sense of like, you no risk, no reward. You sort of like mm. the, you know, the reward of it, right? Or sort of like the, that maybe you're like a um, bit of a daredevil type of thing. Yeah. Or you might like that. I mean, when we are eating something really spicy, we will feel a little bit of a um, increase in some of the stress hormones and it can give you like a nice little energy boost for sure i'll tell some people who i feel like are trying to get their anger out like they're trying to feel some of that anger to eat some spicy food but i'm thinking of my friend dr barasa she's the founder of shen medicine and i think a, a chinese medicine perspective on that would be super interesting oh that would be interesting. yeah yeah okay i'm gonna look into that i'll ask your doctor you have a, you probably have so many like cool friends in your life that are doctors therapists and experts and they're amazing i mean yeah hit me up for any any recs you're gonna regret that <laughs> every hour just texting you something <laughs> how can someone start incorporating healing foods into their daily routine during challenging times like what's a, what's an easy first step to doing that because mm -hmm. i think people get overwhelmed very easily maybe i'm speaking for myself but yeah it's like a simple thing of how they can start. I think the first thing is is just to keep in mind that your body is really, really resilient and strong. And we don't need to be just like inundating our bodies with like the rainbow every single yeah. day in order to heal. Yeah. You can come up with a very simple routine and just stick to it for a while. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to think of what an example would be for someone early on, like a really nutrient dense smoothie. Again, I, I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of, of coconut water. It's usually better chilled. I know some people think it takes, like, tastes like socks, um, but <laughs> <laughs> then, um, yeah, but then so a lunch might be some really good quality bone broth mm. with a little bit of white rice in it. And some um, some people will they'll whisk like eggs into it or pulled rotisserie mm. chicken, put that in there. And then at night, it might just be like some roasted veggies with avocado. And I mean, buy like this is the time to buy prepared food. I mean, I one thing I talk about is having a rainy day breakup fund, which I know sounds so cynical, but I truly think we yeah. we can heal in a vacuum per se but my clients who can throw some money at the problem and indulge in um some things like you know a sauna membership yeah like a uh what a, what am i trying to say like the hot yoga like fahrenheit yeah. some some quality prepared foods if you're saving up for that it will make the healing process easier and it will also make you more distracted to to do the thing that a lot of us have a hard time doing which is not reaching out that is so true great points Really great points. And then my last question is, what other practices or techniques can you do to complement the healing power of food? Uh, I mean, the, I think really understand 
the this is not to scare anyone who's going through a heartbreak but I heard an analogy from a therapist one time that going through a really bad breakup or divorce is like trying to reverse your blood flow I mean the way it changes every aspect of your life you are living in a different time space continuum than the rest of the world I mean it is very analogous to grief like quite literally losing someone and so if you and and there's a thing um, called disenfranchised grief, which is basically grief that our society doesn't really recognize. Like you're rarely will you get days off from work right. for a breakup. Like the or, world just keeps spinning and everyone's moving and you're just stuck in this. Yeah, and, and it's like nobody else is paying attention yeah, to it. Yeah, you know, pet loss, job loss, those yeah. are other forms of you know fertility stuff, yeah. disenfranchised grief, and so really understanding that you kind of have to be at the helm of treating yourself with that level of delicacy. I tell my clients to treat themselves like they are post-ops. I'm like huge surgery. You know, what would you do to take care of yourself? You know, if no one else were going to do that. It's Uh, true. Your body does get rocked in so many ways that like, and we don't think about prioritizing, like taking care of ourselves the way we would a patient or somebody else that's going through something really hard and hurtful and painful. Like it really does take a toll on your body. Oh my gosh. I feel like I hear people say all the time, I feel like I got hit by a truck. Yeah. You will have physical yeah. pain. Yeah. That's so sad. Yeah. It, it really is. It is sad. So <laughs> for anyone that's going through a heartbreak, we hope this helped. And it's. Yeah. It, I think it, it is too of kind of knowing that you're, one, you're not alone. Like you always think when you're going through this, you're like, but it couldn't have been this bad for somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it's such a hard feeling. But I do think the takeaways that you said, like surrounding yourself with people that want to take care of you, allowing yourself to go through these process, uh, processes, that's not a word. Processes? 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 I don't know. Go through like the motions, the, the emotions. The... Yeah. And, and get your cookbook. Thank you. <laughs> no, but I think, where MC. can everybody get, I'm sure it's all online. And mm-hmm. do you have a specific website that you send people to? So it's on Amazon and in most bookstores, but you can go to my website to get most of the information, llbalance.com, or my publisher's website is Blue Hills Press. And that's where you can get a personalized hardback if you want oh, one of those cool. limited edition. And then so I want to know, do you take clients online? Oh, they're all online. All of them? Yeah. Oh, all so- virtual. So anyone, so people listening could like sign up to take courses or speak to you or yeah. how do they do that? Yeah. So if you go to my website, you can go to my consulting, uh, I think it's my offerings page and you can book into my uh, calendar for a free compatibility call. We'll chat. Cool. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Well, I'm sure you're going to be getting a lot of calls. I I'd feel like to. it is the season. It, it really, I mean, really. Isn't yeah. it crazy though? I, I bet you see it, especially in the work that you do, that it is in phases, like when it's like I, it's always happening, but like there's really breakup seasons and heartbreak seasons and like tough times for people. It's crazy. What about the new year? <laughs> well, I mean, it's like what you were saying. I mean, that a reason I cackled and did a creepy laugh is because <laughs> it's like we'll a lot of people have like a second wave of grief, even if it didn't just happen. Yeah. Because there's so much drama around the idea of the the new like the new no. year and who you're supposed to be and all of that throw that i keep a bucket for the words that we throw out that's like one of those things we just like throw it in the bucket it doesn't mean anything it doesn't like new year new me i hate mm. it i really don't like it and i was that girl well for sure really i mean in the health food world it was like hard not to be for a while i posted a quote the other day where it was like the scariest place to be is in the same place you were the year before like to mm-hmm. grow some some girl got a little bit mad at me. She goes, "No, this ain't it, KB. This isn't the quote." And I was like, "Oh, I was like, well, it, to me it meant. Right. Can it be mine? Yeah, I was like, well, it really spoke to me because. And she goes, "Well, what if you're happy? Like you, what if you actually are content and happy? And like, I was like, well, in my opinion, there's always room to grow until mm-hmm. the day I die. I hope I grow every year, and I hope to always be in a different place than I was the year before in the best way, happiness." capacity to love to learn like to grow so i I was like but that's just how i approach new years is i just want to be more intentional than the year before and always just expanding in whatever way i can i i I totally agree i totally agree i'm on board with you especially because it doesn't take into what her perspective i mean i would say her perspective is valid but it's also why people say money doesn't buy happiness because as humans we reach thresholds of happiness and we have to move past them because it's not just the happiness of having these things that other people would technically want Mm -hmm. it's it's 
it, like you're saying, it's up leveling and growing. I right. do think that's fundamental to happiness. Right. Yeah, I agree. Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Thank you. I love listening to you talk because you are knowledgeable, but you also use really big words. And I'm always so jealous of people who can use big words because I'm like, I can, I can talk. Sometimes I struggle with articulating my feelings, but I could talk all day long. You won't hear one big word come out of my mouth though. <laughs> Not one. And you're over here. I know sometimes I nod and you say something like Googling it after. I was like, what? <laughs> but that's thank so cool. You. No, honestly, thank you so much. I, I feel like people are always fascinated by anything to do with heartbreak or loss you know it's we're, we all deal with it it's all something we collectively deal with together and separately sometimes but we all have to go through it at some point yeah and no it's getting around nice it. to yeah there's no getting around it and so it's always nice to hear people who are professionals or people that understand it or people that give you hope you know thank that you there's light at the end of the tunnel so thank you i'm caitlin bristow your session is now ending and if i'm being honest i wouldn't mind a rating and review